Hey guys, it's Madison back in my blue chair for another crazy video. And today we are reacting to the second half of the Unwell episode on essential oils. If you guys haven't seen part one, definitely check it out. Basically, Netflix is very serious about what they want shown on YouTube, so they are copyright claiming a ton of fair use videos. It's a struggle. I'm probably going to do what I did last time, and I know a lot of you guys liked that, the reaction style video, but where I voice over. Yeah, we're, we're just gonna, we're gonna improvise, we're gonna work with it, see how it goes. Before we get into the video, I do wanna put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. On the last video, I had a disclaimer that I put in the beginning of the video talking about my particular stance on alternative medicine practices and the healthcare industry and all of that. But the intro ended up being like 15 minutes long and I just didn't want anyone to sit through that because that's a lot to sit through before getting into the actual meat of the content. So I edited that out. And of course that ended up being one of the comments that I would see repeatedly is like, oh, well I'm for the healthcare system or I'm against alternative medicine practices. That's not the case. So I'll just include that part right here here so you guys know my particular stance. I do want to put out a disclaimer I guess on my particular stance on wellness and wellness related companies. I definitely think that not all wellness companies are bad, that there is validity in a lot of the emerging wellness practices, but when they are well studied and when the approaches and treatments are given from a scientific standpoint. And I definitely think that people in wellness who are really passionate about that particular category of wellness or alternative medicine should 100% be fighting against misinformation just because I think that the spread of misinformation can actually be to the detriment of that wellness practice. There's this growing mistrust in the healthcare system. We have a broken system where medicine is seen as for profit, where healthcare is seen as for profit. I think because of this, there's now this skepticism in doctors and even treatments that have been proven to help. So people start to join all natural and clean living groups and become convinced that this all natural version is so much better than the crooked and broken healthcare system and big pharma. But the irony I can't help but point out is most of these natural solutions are also being sold to you by companies that are for-profit companies that profit from your belief in their medical claims as well. And I think overall, this is a really sad result of a broken healthcare system. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on with the video. But first, before we get into the video, if you like deep dives and like to analyze scams and unethical business practices going on, on the internet, don't forget to subscribe down below and give this video a thumbs up. Yeah, if you like this video, definitely don't forget to give it a like. And well, let's get into it. So in part one, I read Young Living, the essential oil MLM company, who's kind of the main subject of this video. I read their statement on their thoughts surrounding Unwell's episode on essential oils. And it was basically like, hey, people involved with our company, this video is about our company, but like, please don't watch it. There's no important information in here. You don't even have to worry about that. Just like completely ignore it, pretend you don't see, you don't hear anything, and don't even look into this information that has to do with the company that you're in. But the other company featured in this episode is doTERRA, and they came out with a statement on Unwell as well. So I thought I would read that for you guys as well. Why does that end up being a word that I say so often in these videos? This post was also by MLM Mombi. Love this account, they're awesome. So this is what doTERRA had to say. Yesterday, August 12th, Netflix released a six episode docuseries that has essential oils as its first episode and includes a section about doTERRA 
and the direct sales industry. When we first learned of the documentary, we were disappointed that essential oils, which are acknowledged as having become mainstream in the episode, were lumped together with fringe and extreme health practices and products that are featured in subsequent episodes. I think that because essential oils are now mainstream, I think that's what makes it more important to talk about than some of these fringe health practices that are mentioned in later episodes. Conversely, the episode attacks doTERRA, as well as the second largest essential oil company, in predictable and disappointing ways that are typical of decades-old MLM bashing. It's like these companies are playing the victim. Everyone's attacking us and bashing us. And we've done nothing wrong. This sensationalistic slant did not distinguish doTERRA's unique approach to direct selling that simply does not fit this outdated stereotype. I love how in that statement, they're even kind of admitting that MLMs as a whole kind of have a bad rap, but they're like, but we're different. We're not like other MLMs. We're the quirky, unique MLM. Regrettably, the episode also focuses on a doTERRA wellness advocate who makes impermissible health claims in direct violation of doTERRA's policies. You have to wonder if it was so easy for them to find a doTERRA rep that makes claims against their policies. How many others are out there doing the same? But you know, doTERRA is super against that. So what are they going to do? Of course, they're going to take immediate action to show that they don't support these claims at all, right? That wellness advocate has already received notice that she's being investigated for possible disciplinary action. What investigation needs to happen if someone makes outrageous claims, literally on a documentary, you see it, words come out of their mouth. What further investigation needs to be done to be like, hey, we don't condone that. If you don't know what an MLM company is, I'll leave the definition up here so you can pause and read through it. This person that we're going to be reacting to today is high up in the company. So she's setting an example for how to sell this product. And if she's making outrageous claims, that example is being set to everyone in her downline. By them kind of saying we're investigating whether or not to take action, they're basically like kind of saying they're fine with this. All of these essential oil MLM companies claim they don't support any outrageous health advice, but they do nothing to actually stop it from being spread because they have everything to gain from that misinformation being spread about their products because more products will be sold. And I think that this exemplifies that really well. So let's get into reacting to the rest of this episode. I am pretty excited to getting into watching the rest of Unwell, even though watching people consuming essential oils makes me feel unwell. Part two of this episode on Unwell Essential Oils starts out with a woman pouring doTERRA essential oils into her mouth while saying, I fully credit the essential oils for saving my life. She then explains that she's a wellness advocate with doTERRA. She has favorite essential oils for putting in water. Lemon, lime, and orange are the ones that she puts in water. Why do MLM reps feel the need to promote consuming essential oils and putting them in water? Why? Why is that such a common thing? Stop! Please! Get some help. The doTERRA rep has a doTERRA meeting where she goes on to say, So I assume that you're here today because you are looking for solutions for a health concern that's going on in your life. That whole angle concerns me because I'm like, you're the one that invited people to this party. So you kind of know what's going on in their life. Are you targeting people who do have health concerns? The doTERRA rep goes on to share her story, how when she was 12, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor. 
the story of her surgery and how for her chemotherapy was not an option. She then goes on to talk about how frankincense and clove oils have anti-cancer antioxidant properties. She was taking some form of essential oils every couple hours and then magically every MRI her doctor would just say keep what you're doing and we'll see you in six months. I think that's such a traumatic thing to go through at such a young age, and I'm so happy that this doTERRA rep made it out of that, but I also find it really interesting that a lot of MLM reps have these very extreme and bizarre stories, and it's always like, this product that I'm selling to you was actually the thing that helped me recover from this very serious disease. Well, I do not doubt that she dealt with what she says she dealt with. It also doesn't mean that essential oils were the key component that helped her. It's just like Z-Man says, they had cancer, they used essential oils, now they don't have cancer. Correlation doesn't mean causation, and I do get really frustrated when a lot of reps act as if correlation means causation. This is the weirdest part of this entire storyline to me. The doTERRA rep goes on to say, my mom was very careful that she never brought up that we are using essential oils. If she had told my neurosurgeon that, he could have easily called Child Protective Services and said this mom is trying to avoid radiation. It was this big secret that we were holding through the whole process. Really? Now, I, you know, have never had cancer and I'm not in the healthcare industry, but if you are or you know a little bit about this, would a doctor call Child Protective Services on someone for using essential oils for the reason that they're avoiding radiation? That just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Hey, is there an oil for this? I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, the answer is yes. Oils just happen to cure every single ailment or help with every single ailment you can think of. If my toe hurts, there's an oil for that. If I have too many nose boogers, there's an oil for that. And this is the weirdest claim I've ever seen about essential oils. This rep says essential oils help clean out the blood in the outside part of the cell. What? What? First off, there's just so much anecdotal evidence in this, it's kind of mind-blowing. But we're not supposed to say that essential oils cured this disease. That is due to the FDA. They're making it impossible, but for no reason. Why would they do that? I love how so many people in this explain FDA limitations and crackdowns. They're like, well, you can't make claims, but that's because the FDA is mean. They just don't want you to. They just decided that we're not allowed to, and so now we can't. Silly FDA. The reality is the FDA doesn't want you making unsubstantiated medical claims. You know? Okay, are you guys ready for this? Our healthcare system doesn't really like essential oils. It takes away from our big pharma and all of those sales. And then she goes on to sell essential oils to this group by talking about the prices of essential oils and how it's actually kind of cheap because drops of essential oils are small, but if you divide every single drop of an essential oil into how many cents you're spending, then you know, you're spending one cent every tenth of a drop. Yeah, it takes money away from big pharma and gives it to all of the essential oil MLM companies. These companies take advantage of that broken system and mistrust in the healthcare industry and use it for their own profit, for their own personal gain. Because just because the healthcare system is a broken system doesn't mean that essential oils are the answer to all of your ailments, and it definitely doesn't mean that consuming essential oils will cure you of cancer. And so ask yourself for a second, are you and your family any healthier? because of traditional medical care? Well, my appendix burst about a year ago and I was hospitalized for four days. If it wasn't for doctors and the hospital that helped me, I might have been dead. So I'd say I'm like happier. I don't know how happy. <laughs> 
just like kind of happier. I don't know. It was a little painful, like maybe thank you doctors, but I'm sure if I rubbed peppermint oil on my belly, it would have done a very similar thing, so. Also, why does being pro essential oil have to be anti-doctor? I'm all for wellness studies and alternative medicine treatments, but to say that doctors are bad and just don't help is simply not true. To make an oversweeping statement that all doctors are bad is just not true. <laughs> There's, they help a lot of people and they do a lot of things that essential oils cannot do. And to claim otherwise, you're just selling snake oil. With the doTERRA business, I have been very blessed. I have reached the rank of diamond with doTERRA. So diamond is one of the top ranks. My paychecks are now over $20,000 every single month. But that has nothing to do with your promotion of all of these cures that essential oils have. No, that's just unbiased advice and claims being made, completely unbiased. Then this doTERRA rep gets on a call with a member of her downline, and this is so sad. I love how she's literally on a call with someone right now about how they're not making money. If you don't know, when you join an MLM, the FTC has found that 99.9% .9 of people lose money in MLMs. It's just not a profitable business opportunity to get into. It's not a get rich quick thing. I know the builders will definitely come for sure. And the rep says, yeah, it's just time. They'll show up when God wants them to. This is the best career on the planet. I just need to get it profitable. And that's so sad. Definitely not get rich quick scheme. Because no one's getting rich. <laughs> 99.9% .9 of people are definitely not getting rich. Then we see a montage of Young Living conventions, how over the top they are, how emotional people get and excited, and just how devoted to this company people are. Yeah, definitely very cult-like. And then we hear about Gary Young, the founder of Young Living. The episode goes on to talk about Gary Young's past, they talk about his health facility that he opened and the tragic story of his daughter. And then the most disturbing part of Gary Young's story to me, they talk about his clinic that he opened in Utah where a patient sued him claiming that a treatment had almost killed her. So he closes the clinic in Utah and opens one in Ecuador where he gave essential oils intravenously to patients and even apparently performed a gallbladder surgery without a medical license. Gary Young was really the one that promoted this idea that essential oils could have these miraculous healing properties. This is so disturbing to me, the really intense medical experimentation that Gary Young has done on people. Like, oh my gosh, that's just disgusting. And this information is all readily available on the internet, yet Young Living reps continue to worship him. So this next part of the video, we'll see how it goes. I know that from Savannah Marie and her Unwell video that she's working on currently, this part, even just the visuals get copyright claimed. So we'll see how editing Madison works around this or tries to. Next, we meet Connie, a former Young Living distributor. When she decided to do this business, she was a stay-at-home mom who ran into a friend from high school that introduced her to Young Living. This friend said, you can work around your schedule of your kids and it's easy. All you have to do is talk about the oils and people will buy. Connie talked about how it's the dream job for stay-at-home moms. MLMs target stay-at-home moms with this idea that you can work from home, spend time with your kids, still be there as a parent, but also reach success in your multi-level marketing business. And I feel like not only is that a really nice idea for a lot of stay-at-home moms, but it's also really appealing to the rep or the recruit themselves or the MLM company, because if the person fails, they can just be like, well, you didn't put enough time into this. Well, you didn't work hard enough. Like, duh, if you want to be successful at something, you have to work hard. You have to put in time. And it's like, well, but you said that I could work from home and spend time with my family. 
I bought all their promo material, I bought oils for samples. I ended up spending a few thousand dollars. It seemed like a good business opportunity, but it wasn't. Every single time I listen to someone's story, it just makes me realize how many people are out there with these experiences, with these traumatic experiences, with this MLM scam, and it just is so disheartening. Next we meet Austin, I'm not going to pronounce that last name, who's an attorney and co-lead counsel on a class action against Young Living. Connie explains to this lawyer, it's not like I can just have a party and sell oils. People have to sign up and become a distributor. In addition to that, they require that you enroll in what's called essential rewards, where you have to purchase at least $100 worth of product a month yourself to be able to collect commissions from the people below you. Austin explains, what you just described is exactly a pyramid scheme. Pyramid schemes operate by building downlines. It's the lifeblood of a pyramid scheme. And that's the biggest issue, is it's practically a requirement of MLM companies to put people underneath you even if they say that the main thing is just selling this product and recommending it to people, in reality, the only people that succeed in MLM companies are the ones who are able to put a lot of people under them. So in a way, you yourself are the product. So many people's excuse for why MLMs aren't pyramid schemes is because you're selling a product. But if you think about it, if there is no personal volume, in an MLM company, if you did not have requirements to purchase a certain amount of product monthly, and all of your downline did not have requirements to purchase product monthly, if there was no personal volume requirements, would this MLM company even be successful? That's the real question. Austin explains, Royal Crown Diamond is the top level of the pyramid. Now, if you reach that level, it's a good company. You make 1.8 million a year average income. Unfortunately, there's only been 46 of those in the history of the company. 46. 46. If you go back and look at the conventions with all of these people and think about how only 46 have reached success, you look at that sea of people, only 46 are successful. That really puts things into perspective. Young Living declined to be interviewed, but said, Our products are not meant to treat or diagnose medical conditions, and we encourage our customers to consult medical professionals if they feel they may have health issues. They talk about how essential oils aren't used to treat and diagnose. And I just realized, if you look at their very own founder, their founder, the only thing he did with essential oils is treat and diagnose and do bizarre medical experiments on people. Creepy medical experiments where it's almost like like evil villain, like scary horror movie type of stuff. That was literally his entire career was treating and diagnosing things with essential oils. So what do you mean? Next, we hear about Stacy's story. I trusted the teachings that I was getting from this multi-level marketing company. The company said you could use essential oils three, four, five, six, seven times a day. The first sign of reaction was, I noticed a little bit of a rash on my forearm. I thought, oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure where that came from. So I put tea tree oil on it, and the next day, it was even worse. Where do you turn but the Facebook groups of your peers, who you believe are educated, but they're not? The answers were always, no, it can't be the oils. You can't have a reaction to them. It's a good thing you have a rash. Your body is just detoxing. Keep taking the oils. this happens with so many just really bizarre alternative medicine practices where someone posts a bad reaction and the response is always, that's just a detox. Your body's just detoxing. What? Where is the medical validity in what you are saying that your body has severe reactions when it's detoxing? Where are the studies? 
what are you basing this off of? I've never understood that. It's so bizarre and also just so upsetting to me because I wonder how many people do actually continue to listen to their peers and do something that is genuinely harming their body because they think it's all a detox. Graphic content warning, Stacy ends up showing the rash and how it spread. Her body had swollen up so badly she couldn't even bend her limbs. If something's natural and organic, everybody wants to jump on board with it. However, there are things in mass quantities that are not good for us, even though they're natural. And the damage has been so severe that I'm now allergic to these essential oils. The worst thing about all of this too is I remember a childhood friend of mine actually became allergic to lavender when she was a child, like when she was super, super young. And her parents didn't know this for a while and they were giving her lavender baths every night and they didn't know that that was what was causing her reaction. So she would get these horrible skin rashes and eventually they put two and two together that, okay, she was allergic to the lavender. This development of an allergic reaction can even occur with children. It really, really bothers me when I think about how many MLM reps have given their children so many essential oils that their kids have even had severe allergic reactions. Why did this happen to me? Has it happened to anybody else? So many people have had reactions to essential oils, but now I know. I fell hook, line, and sinker, so that's where I'll take my responsibility. The responsibility that I'm putting on the MLM company is the poor training that they provided, the lack of safety information, and the fact that their bottom line is the bottom line. Yes, yes, thank you. Totally agree. These MLM companies are just not blameless in this. They just aren't. The worst thing of all is they talk about how much they don't support all these claims, so they know how dangerous it is. They know how bad it is, yet they still refuse any responsibility for where the fault lies on their part. I just really hope that one day those who've experienced such harsh reactions and such horrible treatment from these MLM companies are able to get justice because it is a serious injustice that has gone on for way too long. And lastly, we get an update on Sarah and her mom. Marshall explains how they followed the protocol and used Sarah's sleep blend with her diffuser. The mom explains that for Sarah, the diffuser has been working really well for sleep, which has really helped their day-to-day -day life as well. I'm so happy for the family and that it was a great therapy for Sarah. But I also really like how the mom includes the essential oils couldn't be the end all for us but I'm feeling like it's a really good, important tool. I think that's a great outlook. It's not the cure-all, but it can be a helpful tool. I'm so glad that it seems like Sarah was really helped from the essential oils in her aromatherapist. It seemed like her mom was really looking to Sarah and her reactions and being very cautious. I think overall, I don't have a ton of problems with this treatment. I did mention, once again, medical experimentation and involuntary consent are huge topics that I think need to be talked about when it comes to alternative medicine practices being used on autistic children. That's just a moral stance that I will continue to take. But I also think overall this particular instance of using essential oils as a treatment is better than a lot of other ones out there. And I'm really glad for both of them and really happy at this seemingly happy ending. So wow. That whole episode was just a lot to take in. Some of that stuff really scarred me. I do think the format of Unwell is really interesting, taking both the positives and negatives or good and bad information about an alternative medicine practice and kind of analyzing both of them. Being exposed to both sides is really helpful. You can understand people's stories, relate to it. I think my favorite thing of this entire episode was listening to a lot of the aromatherapists. They really focus on safety first above all else. And I think that was really cool to see and gave me a lot of hope. And I really hope that those voices rise to the top above all of these really, really horrible voices that are telling you to consume essential oils and feed them to your children. 
don't feed essential oils to your children. I would love to know your thoughts on this entire episode, if you think it's helpful or if you think it's hurtful. And also, I would say let me know if you want me to review any other Netflix series. I guess um, I'm a little bit scarred from this entire YouTube uploading experience, but if you do want to see more Netflix series reviews and you're really interested in that, definitely let me know and I might go through the pain again all for you guys. Just kidding, but kind of not. Overall, I'm tired. It's about 2 a.m. at the moment, so I'm gonna go to sleep. Maybe diffuse a little lavender and peppermint oil. Just kidding. And I'll catch you guys on the flippity flip. See you on the flippity flip.